Hello everyone, I'm Danielle. In this video, I'll be sharing five time-saving tips that I use on my Nikon cameras to shave off those crucial few seconds out in the field while I'm shooting. If you don't have a Nikon, don't worry too much because some of the tips might just be applicable to your camera brand as well. So here we go. In wildlife photography, every second counts. And that's why I like to set up my camera to save me as much as possible time while I'm preparing, shooting and reviewing my photographs in camera. As I said, I'm using a Nikon D850 to demonstrate the tips, but the tips might just be applicable to your camera. If you're shooting with a Nikon, then the menu numbers might differ slightly, but the concepts and the names all remain the same. So let's start with tip number one. Tip number one, make use of your sub selector. We like to also call this the joystick. And if you're lucky enough to have one on your camera, then make use of it. In shooting mode, I use it to move around my focus points. I find it much more convenient and much faster than using the multi selector, which is further away from my back button, which is the button I use to focus. So for me, using the sub selector is much more convenient when I'm moving around my focus points. On this point, I also like to activate focus point wraparound. What that means is, if I have selected the focus point to the far right of my screen, of my viewfinder, and I want to quickly access the focus point on the far left of my viewfinder, then all I have to do is go one to the right, and it'll immediately start again and hop to the left of the screen. So it wraps around. I don't have to toggle through all the focus points to get to the left-sided one. I can just keep going right, it'll wrap around, and it'll start again left when I'm falling off the edge of my viewfinder. So that I find saves a lot of time. It's also applicable for top and bottom, um, for focus points on the top and bottom of your viewfinder as well. When pressed down, my sub selector activates focus but with a different autofocus area mode than my back button activates. So my back button, my AF on button, is set to single point focus and my sub selector say is set to dynamic nine. So therefore I have two autofocus area modes very close to each other and access very close to each other. And that saves a lot of time instead of, especially when you have a heavy lens to hold, um, the usual button that you'd use is on the left side of the camera. You have to take your hand off the lens, drop your camera usually down, press the button, change your autofocus area mode and then lift your lens back up. But with, this, with these two buttons um, that activates a different autofocus area mode, it saves a lot of time. I use my back button as my primary focusing button, but it's probably just because old habits die hard. And I think it's a very good idea to use the sub selector to toggle around your focus points and then press it in to activate your, your autofocus. I think that'll save even more time than taking your finger off the back button and putting it on the sub selector. But it's your choice. Either way, it saves a lot of time to do it this way. I'll quickly show you how to set that up. To customize your sub selector, go into your menu down to custom setting menu, all the way down to controls, custom control assignment. Then you'll see this button over here and it says sub selector. Now this refers to pressing the sub selector to the sides and up and down. If you select that, you can make your sub selector act as your multi selector or as your focus point selection. Now all that this does, so if you say same as multi selector, you have a scroll and a display next. This refers to playback zoom. So this is only for when you are playing back a photograph. So say we select same as multi-selector and we say scroll, it means that when you play back your photograph and you zoom in, then your sub-selector is going to scroll around the zoomed image. If we select display next or previous frame, when you then zoom into your photograph afterwards, and you use your multi your, your sub selector it's going to flip from photograph to photograph so it's going to then um, select the next frame so that's all it does when you select this same as multi selector so that doesn't have an influence on moving your focus points around if you select focus point selection and you're in playback so there's your photograph and now you touch your sub selector 
what it's going to do is it's going to put you straight into shooting mode. It's not going to scroll through your images um, and even if you zoomed in and you push your sub selected to the right or the left it's immediately going to activate your focus points and take you into shooting mode. If you then go to the next option over there, sub selector center. So that's basically for when you press the sub selector in as a button. And that's where I have it set to an AF area mode, different to the one set to my back button, my primary one, plus activating autofocus. And that's what I like to do. And that's what I mean when I say that it's it's a second back button basically that activates a different autofocus area mode. So that is set up for me as group area autofocus plus AF on. And those are the two sub selector um, options to customize your, your sub selector. To set up your focus point wraparound, go into your menu system, down to custom setting menu, choose autofocus and go all the way down until you see an option that says focus point wraparound and make sure that that is set to wrap. Tip number two, set up your command dial to scroll through your images. This is something you have to actually set up on Nikon cameras but check out your camera model it might be already set up on your camera model. I find it much quicker to scroll through the images using my command dial instead of my multi-selector. It's much slower with the multi-selector and especially if you've just shot say 15 or 20 shots in succession and you quickly want to check if you have a keeper, it's really convenient to just scroll through using the command dial rather than the multi-selector. So that's a quick time-saving tip that I use when reviewing my photos out in the field and this is how you set it up. Go into your menu system all the way down to custom setting menu down to controls and then you'll see an option that says customize command dials go down to menus and playback and make sure that that is set to on and now you'll be able to scroll through all your images using your command dial number three limit your autofocus mode to AFC only. I am on AFC for 99.9% .9 of my shots. That together with back button focus covers all my options I find. Um, the reason why I'm giving you this tip is because I have had plenty of guests and I've made the mistake myself that in the heat of the moment, in the chaotic action-packed scene, you press in your autofocus button on the left and you scroll the wrong command dial. So the one changes your autofocus area mode and the other one changes your autofocus mode. So say you want to quickly change from single point to dynamic nine and you're not using any shortcuts to do so and you're also not using your sub selector, then you might find that you accidentally switch from AFC to AFS. I've seen this happen plenty times. And then you miss the shot because it's a movement shot. You know, there's movement in the shot and, and unfortunately the camera doesn't track that because it's on AF, AFS instead of AFC. That's why I like to limit my autofocus mode to AFC only. It's the way I shoot, as I say, I'm in AFC most of the time, so it doesn't bug me. If I do find that I need to use AFS, it's usually in a scenario where I have a lot of time to change. And then I can go into my menu system and activate AFS if I want to. But to prevent myself from accidentally going onto AFS, I set up AFC as the only option. And this is how you do it. Go into your menu system. All the way down to custom setting menu, autofocus, and then go down until you see an option that says autofocus mode restrictions, and then select AFC. Tip number four, storing points by orientation. This refers to focus points, and I know for sure that this is available on some other camera brands other to Nikon. What this does is the camera remembers where you last left your focus point in the orientation that you were in. So if you were in landscape orientation, it remembers where you were. If you turn your camera then into portrait orientation, it will remember the focus point that you used last in portrait orientation. I find this to be very helpful um, because sometimes you're in a scene and you want to have, for example, an environmental shot where you portray the animal in its environment and the focus point, say, is off to the far left of your viewfinder. 
and then quickly before it does anything you want to get a portrait tightly cropped portrait shot of the animal so you turn into portrait orientation quickly zoom in click and then you want to go back and wait for the animal to do something in the environmental shot and that's where storing points by orientation would come in handy because you as soon as you turn your camera into portrait orientation your focus point would be on the top on the eye of the animal top third um, of the viewfinder another scene where this is helpful is when you are shooting a bird in flight or you're waiting for a bird to fly now the nifty thing about some cameras with Nikon specifically is that with the orientation not only can you activate a certain position of a focus point but you can also activate a certain autofocus area mode with that orientation so you're waiting for the bird to fly it's on the side of your on the side of your viewfinder because you're leaving space for it to fly into your frame and not clip the wings not cut it off so you zoomed out and you're waiting then you quickly want to turn into portrait orientation zoom in get a nice beautiful tightly cropped portrait of this this bird but for that say you want to be in single point but for the landscape orientation you want to be in group or dynamic nine or whatever you use for birds in flight and what you do is you set up your portrait orientation to have the focus point on the top third together with single point and then you set up for landscape to be on group or whatever and the focus point is towards the left of the viewfinder this is really handy what what you'll see is with portraits mostly and as always there are exceptions but mostly with portraits tightly cropped portraits your focus point will be on the top third of your viewfinder because that's where the eyes are and you don't want to crop the legs or the the body off below so usually for my portraits I see that my focus point is on the top third and if I leave it there in, in portrait orientation. Tip number five, make use of your custom settings. Nikon calls this user modes or photo shooting menu banks or menu banks. To me this is the ultimate time saver and I've spoken about this in previous videos. What this means in a nutshell is that you can save a group of camera settings as a set together and you can save a few sets and flick between the change between the sets really quickly at the click of a button on a shortcut. So for example you are shooting a portrait of a animal and you're at one thousandth of a second or whatever you're at for a portrait and then the animal starts walking into the shade and you see it as a brilliant panning opportunity. Now instead of scrolling all the way from your fast shutter speed down to 1 15th of a second for example, you can just quickly flick between your banks or your user um, modes and you go from 1 over 1 thousandth of a second to 1 over 15 of a second really quickly. You can add other settings as well to those banks or those user, user groups. And that's really handy because you often want to, especially when you're getting creative in photography, you often want to change quickly between groups of settings. I've done a very extensive video on how to do this. So check out the link and you'll see that you can set it up um, depending on your camera, either user modes or photo shooting menu banks. These are five of my time-saving tips. Um, I'm sure there are plenty more, so if you have any other tricks up your sleeve, you're welcome to leave a comment below and tell me what you like to do to save time when you're out in the field. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please remember to subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon to get notifications about when our next videos are available to watch. We'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.